Tadej Pogacar, king of kings, a cyclist like no other in the modern era. We have rarely seen a star take on the Tour de France, Cobble Classics and the Ardennes quite as confidently as this giant of the sport. A two-time Tour de France champion Olympic medalist, winner of five monuments as well as a bronze medalist at the World Championships. With all of this looking like a bit of a distant memory, as Vingo prepares to defend his Tour de France title once again in 2024, have Pogacar's best days at the Tour de France been and gone? Can Tadej Pogacar ever win the Tour de France again? Magnifique Tadej Pogacar qui remporte cette étape. C'est un phénomène, c'est un prodige. Tadej Pogacar qui a écrit sa légende aujourd'hui sur la route de la planche des Belfilles. On se souviendra de ce chrono. How the f did we get here? Let's look back to 2020, a year like no other. Back then, the Slovenian Tadej Pogacar came into the Tour de France as an underestimated package. Teared up as UAE's co-leader alongside Fabio Aru, the 21-year-old Tadej Pogacar was rocking and rolling his way around France, claiming wins on all four corners at the French Republic. From riding a unicycle for his neighbours in Comenda to climbing La Planche des Belfies at the head of the Tour de France, it felt like more than a paradigm shift in the sport when he seized the Tour de France win on stage 20's dramatic time trial. Slovenian expectations were inversed. The kid had come to play, despite a backdrop of a global pandemic and a seemingly unbeatable former ski jumper Primoz Roglic. In 2021, Poggy consolidated his new reputation as cycling's headline act. Wins across the board from the UAE Tour, Tirreno Adriatico and the Tour of Slovenia proved that Tade was on top of the world. A vintage Tour de France win that year in seemingly unbeatable form came his way, along with three mighty stage wins at the Grand Boucle. A yellow jersey, an Olympic medal to go with it, and monument wins, 2021 was the year of the Poggy. 2022 continued much where the Slovenian left off, taking more big stage race wins as well as a stellar victory on the white roads of Tuscany at Strada Bianca and favourite status at Milan San Remo and the Ronde van Vlaanderen, a race he would have podiumed if he weren't quite so playful with Mathieu van der Poel. Triumphant brothers in arms at the Tour of Slovenia that year, Pogacar was irresistibly calm, confident and dominant in every race he touched in 2022. At least for the most part. At the Tour de France, Poggy entered as the top favourite, and we all seemed to get deja vu once he rattled the pack in the first week on both the cobblestones and the hills of Lorraine. And we had a repeat of his maiden Tour de France win with a lofty stage victory at the top of La Planche de Belfi. 2020, though, felt like a distant memory. On a day filled with big climbs, attacks and plot twists, Pogacar found himself on the back foot at the Tour de France. Dressed from head to toe in yellow, the kid from Commandant Slovenia had lost his way. With Jonas Vingo's attack on the Col du Granon, the iron fist Pogacar had on the Tour de France began to loosen. Stage 11 of the 2022 Tour de France will undoubtedly go down in the ages. A retrospective changing of the guard from Pogacar to Vingo, from UAE's maverick approach to the AI-generated 3D-printed semantics and tactics of Jumbo Visma. From what we thought as being a one-off to a repeated offence in the Pyrenees, Vingegaard sailed to victory at the Tour de France, cracking Pogacar when it counted. With 2023 offering a chance for revenge, Pogacar rattled Jumbo Visma. With Vingegaard in yellow and Pogacar looking for his old friend the yellow jersey back in his company, the Slovenian looked poised to bring it all the way to the final week. This was not the case. Vingegaard and Jumbo planted the nails in Poggy's campaign with an otherworldly time trial effort on stage 16 and the cruel dissection of Pogacar on the Col de la Loz the following day. In Pogacar's own words, he was gone. It felt a world away from Poggy's triumph on the Planche de Belfi just three years prior, as Jonas Vingo continued his Tour de France dynasty. So what does Pogacar need to do to topple Jonas Vingo, a man who is just two years older than him? Jumbo Visma, soon to be called Visma Lisa Bike, have proved that they are the stronger force at the past two Tours de France. With the support of stellar climbers and rulers, the Dutch squad have a well-rounded and well-drilled formation. Of course, we can't admit Wout van Aert's influence on the downfall of Pogacar, whether that be his presence on the Otakam or his important part in the 2023 Tour de France lineup. Forevermore, the image of the green jersey van Aert dropping, the white-clad Pogacar will remain an iconic photo of this era. Backed up by Buelta champion Sepkus in the mountains and new reinforcements in Dylan van Barla and Wilco Kelderman, it looks as though Jumbo will be aiming to replicate their winning formula in the coming years. At UAE Team Emirates, they have been reinforcing their squad equally. Adam Yates proved to be a protagonist at the 2023 Tour de France, and more domestiques and stars have been drafted into the Middle Eastern team in an attempt to topple the Dane Vingegaard. 
while Vingegaard failed to beat Pogacar at UCI World Tour stage races outside of the Tour de France and that strange Tour of the Basque Country in 2011, Vingegaard's laser focus on Grand Tours does seem to be challenging for UAE to compete with. Whilst Jumbo learnt from their mistakes in 2020 with Roglic, their tactics and prowess have become superior at the Tour, much like Team Sky during the 2010s. That said, UAE, with an exciting and ever-expanding roster, may look to experiment with tactics and learn from their own mistakes. For now, though, the team strength and personal might of Vingegaard at the Tour de France looks almost too overwhelming for the effervescent Pogacar. It's always good to keep stock of your own flaws. Pogacar appears to struggle on the longer climbs. On days such as the Col du Ganon or on the Col de la Loz, Pogacar has come unstuck. This isn't just an observation from the 2022 and 23 Tours de France. Pogacar lost time equally in the Col de la Loz summit finish at the 2020 Tour de France, when he was up against Roglic at Jumbo Visma. Days where the race seems to clock up multiple long climbs also seem to be a particular weakness of Poggies. Where Vingo and his team can strangle the race in his own favor, Pogacar can be caught out, and has been on numerous occasions. Also, his boyish desire to win and squeeze out every second from his rivals is thrilling to watch in TV. Believe me, the first two weeks of the Tour de France were written like a Hollywood blockbuster in 2023. However, Pogacar's eagerness to sniff out seconds could be to his own detriment. Whilst Vingegaard's strategy may seem less exciting, that pragmatic style always allows him to strike gold on numerous occasions at the Tour de France. In his own word, Pogacar keeps running out of bullets. In all fairness to Tadej, he is a very talented rider, a boy racer you could say. He loves stages above 200 kilometers, as long as they don't include numerous climbs, and he loves short steep hills such as the ones he's tamed so successfully at the Ardennes Classics. This is a clear advantage on his rivals, including Vingegaard, but the Tour de France doesn't usually offer these kind of stages. Heck, they barely even use hilly stages like a classic. The dynamic of a hill stage in a Grand Tour is not the same as Liege Baston Liege, for instance, thus not really benefiting Pogacar. Similarly, Pogacar's time trialing ability seems to have been matched in recent years by the new king of the tour, Vingegaard. This is very apparent in the final week's time trials over the past three Tours de France. This year, Vingegaard took over one and a half minutes on Pogacar, whilst in 2022, Jonas was eight seconds faster than Pogacar, and in 2021, a tour won by Pogacar, Vingegaard raced the final time trial in Santa Emilion a whole 25 seconds faster than Pogacar. For Pogaccia, it seems hard for him to eke out those extra advantages over Vingo in a realistic Tour de France parkour in the coming years, thus making it hard to believe that he could win a Tour again. Pogaccia's own Tour de France chances could be clouded by the ambitions of others to reach the top step of the podium. Juan Ayuso, for instance, born in 2002, is one of the most promising wonder kids cycling has seen in recent years. Much like Pogaccia, he podiumed his first Grand Tour, and he already has been taking UCI World Tour level victories. The future looks bright for the Spaniard. There's also the breakout star of the youth scene in 2023, the Mexican Isaac Del Toro. Yes, this young rider, much like Pogacar himself, won the under-23 Tour de France, known as the Tour de l'Avenir, the Tour of the Future. With the right support behind him, Del Toro could join l'Avenir alumni such as Pogacar, Bernal, Greg Lamond, and Miguel Indurain as Tour de France champions in the future. Not to forget Tade's own protégé, the Swiss, Jan Christen, who has been rapidly rising through the ranks at Poggi's own team and UAE Team Emirates. These riders could sure as anything support Pogacar, but their potential looks great and maybe could overshadow Pogacar's current leadership position within the team, not to mention the other strong Grand Tour rivals, such as Adam Yates and Joao Meda, who are in the team already. Who's to say that UAE won't bring more talent on? They are, after all, a team backed by an oil-rich state that looks to be unfazed by the current European economic downturn. Virgo also has a similar problem with the rising stars around him at Jumbo Visma, with their incredibly strong development team. This includes the Norwegian star Johannes Stavnemitted, for instance. However, with the departure of Primoz Roglic at Visma, Vingegaard looks to have total control of the team in their Grand Tour objectives over the next two years. If anything, Vingo's leadership position seems to be more safe and secure than Pogacar over at UAE. This video does not dare to claim that the Pogacar era has been frozen over. Tade is alive and breathing across the width and depth of the cycling calendar, and on all terrains from Strada Bianca to the Ronde van Vlaanderen. Vingo, at least at the time of recording, seems to be a Grand Tour hitter. Much in the same ilk as the Grand Tour stars of the 2010s, Vingo aims and smashes his stage race objectives. He isn't clouded by the excitement of the Flemish classics or the legitimate chance of winning the rainbow jersey or Olympic gold. This has been made clear over the past two seasons. Despite looking 
unlike one of the world's best time trialists at the Tour de France, for instance, Vingegaard hasn't competed in a single multinational championship event in this discipline. Pogacar is unique in this regard. He is, to some extent, a modern-day Eddie Merckx. New rising stars like Eudebrux, Ayuso and Rodriguez don't appear to be interested by the big one-day racing objectives like Pogacar. Especially with the added risk factor of targeting a race like the Ronde van Vlaanderen, this does make Grand Tour objectives quite incompatible with these goals. A rider like Pogacar caught up in this balancing act is Remco Evenepoel, who has also suffered a number of disappointing Grand Tour finishes over the past seasons, missing out on the win that many would have expected. Sustaining form from March through to September is a challenge as old as cycling. Doing this and staying out of harm is another risk, one that proved to be detrimental to his Tour de France preparations in 2023 for Pogacar after having crashed out of liege bastogne -Liège, liege in April. Uh, we need to, to take care of uh, everything because, you know, uh, one, uh, one bad day, one uh, bad luck and uh, everything can change. How much does Pogacar really want to win and participate in these other races? Maybe his own flair, hunger and razzmatazz will in fact be his own downfall at the Tour de France. So, will Pogacar ever win the Tour de France again? The big question. You never know, to be honest, with the context of the Tour de France cycle. Maybe one year Vingago skips the race, maybe it's his chance to crash out at a monument and break his wrist before the race. For the moment though, it seems as though Vingago has taken Pogacar's place as the best Grand Tour rider in the peloton. Backed up by a strong and regimented squad, Vingago has demonstrated that he can outplay Pogacar on the longer mountain stages and the final week time trials. Also, Jonas's sometimes dry yet effectively pragmatic style in the Tour de France has yielded him great results, in contrast to Poggy's more aggressive tactics. We saw this displayed at the Col du Ganon, the Otacam, as well as the Col de la Loz and Stage 16's time trial in 2023. For Poggy to overcome Jonas, it'll take a perfect Pogacar parkour and a tactical rejiggle. That said, we also don't know what the future has to hold. There are plenty of wonder kids that seem to be made in scientific labs nowadays who are able to top 10 Grand Tours in their teenage years. This video is not an autopsy of Tade Pogacar's career though. The Slovenian has plenty more to look for outside of the Tour de France. An Olympic gold medal, a rainbow jersey and a monument hunt are all possible in the next season in 2024. It's fair to say that Pogacar is the best cyclist in the world. No one quite races from the gun like him, from the beginning of the season till the end. So it'll be interesting to see what the future holds and whether it'll hold another Tour de France victory for Tadej Pogacar. Let us know down in the comments what you guys think. Will Poggy ever win the yellow jersey again? Will he stand on the top step of the podium? Well, that's all from this video. Thank you very, very much for watching and we will see you around.